day everybody as you can see here I've got my little tiny tiny ones I have got I have got my mouse so this is Minnie Mouse and I have got this one not quite sure what kit it is but that's little Anna and I have got my two Behringer babies my little ones they're, they're five inches that's Adam and her and your sister is Eve. And over here I have got this little one is Tam. And she was created by Tambury. And and this little one is Beth, who was also created by Tambury. So I thought I'll bring my little tiny ones in today to give them a chance. Garfield just lays them back saying, What am I doing here? And I had these all fixed up. Sit there. Where are we going? I I did have them all sitting in right, sitting in there. There we are. There we are. Garfield. There. And today's story is an old story. And it is called The Emperor's New Clothes. We all know this one. Okay, guys, ready? Once upon a time, there lived an emperor who loved clothes. He would strut around his palace in a parade of different outfits day and night. There are mirrors in every room so he could admire his reflection as he passed by. The emperor had... Comfy outfits for the morning, made from silk and trimmed with feathers. He had stylish outfits for the afternoon, made from wool and dyed in rich colours. And he had an extra special outfits for the evening, made from the most expensive cloth and sewn with pure gold thread. In fact, the emperor had so many clothes that he often didn't know what to wear. One day, two men called at the palace. They knew all about the emperor's love of clothes. Your Highness, we are weavers, they said, but we can do something that no other weaver can do. We can make a magic cloth. This cloth is very special because only clever people can see it. Ooh. The emperor was impressed. I would like you to make me a suit from this magic cloth, he said. Of course, your highness. It would be an honour, said the first weaver. They began to measure the emperor, who pouted and preened in the mirror, imagining himself in new suit. Sire... We will need lots of gold thread, said the second weaver. You shall have all the gold thread you need, replied the emperor. He turned to one of his servants. Show this fine gentleman to the royal storeroom. The two men had never seen so much gold thread. Laughing and clapping their hands with glee, they filled their bags and left the palace. A few days later, the emperor called for one of his min ministers. Go and find out how the weavers are getting on, he ordered. I need something new to wear. The minister went off to the weaver's workshop. There he found two weavers sitting in front of a loom, busy at work. The minister rubbed his eyes. He couldn't see any cloth. That's strange, he thought. Not wanting to appeal, to appeal foolish, he smiled at the weavers. The cloth is looking wonderful. When will the emperor's suit be ready? he asked. Soon, soon, said the first weaver. But we will need more gold thread to complete the suit, said the second weaver. The minister hurried back to the emperor. 
As soon as he had gone, the weavers roared with laughter. Oh, this is priceless. What a foolish man. Back at the palace, the minister bowed before the emperor. Not wishing to be called a fool, he said, Sire, I have never seen, seen a cloth more beautiful. The weavers need more gold thread to finish your suit. Well, send more over then, replied the emperor. For a whole week, the weavers pretended to cut and sew the magic cloth to make a new suit. At last, they returned to the palace, proudly pretending to carry the cloth. The emperor was very excited and handed the weavers a heavy bag of gold coins to pay for the outfit. He took off his clothes and the weavers fussed around him, pretending to smooth and adjust the new suit. It fits you perfectly, they cried. The emperor looked in the mirror. He couldn't see any clothes. But not wanting to look foolish, he said, It's wonderful! As soon as the two men had left the palace, they doubled over laughter. Their plan had worked, and now they were rich. News of the emperor's special news suit sp quickly spread throughout the kingdom. Everyone was sure they were able to see the magic cloth. Yes, sire, truly splendid, said the emperor's ministers. No matter how hard he looked, the minister could not see any clothes. I can't be more of a fool than my, minister, than my ministers, he thought, and they can all see the suit. So he ordered them to send out a royal announcement. He would lead a grand press procession through the city wearing his new suit. When the great day arrived, People gathered in the streets to catch a glimpse of the emperor as a procession passed by. Finally, the emperor appeared riding a fine white horse. Nervous whispers rippled through the crowd. No one wanted to appear foolish. So at least a timid voice called out, The emperor's new clothes are magnificent! Suddenly, everybody started talking and shouting at once. How stylish, smart and fashionable. The emperor smiled as he trotted along, very, feeling very pleased with himself. Then a small boy and his sister pushed to the front of the crowd. They started to giggle. Look, they cried. The emperor has no clothes on. Suddenly, everyone realised it was true. Before long, the laughter spread throughout the crowd in waves. The emperor turned bright red. What a fool I am, he gasped. How could I have been so silly and vain? He looked around for the two weavers, but of course, they were nowhere to be seen. Filled with shame, the emperor made his way back to the palace. I will never be so vain about my clothes again, said the emperor to his minister, as he helped him back into his old suit. I promise that I will start to be a better emperor and spend less time looking in the mirror. He was true to his word and he was, was a much happier emperor from that day forward. Now, oh, I've got an itch. No, it's a good itch. Oh, I'll tell you about it tomorrow. Oh, itch, itch. Well, we all remember the emperor's new clothes, and we all knew what was going to happen, didn't we? That was a good story. Oh, they're all fall asleep. Oh, a couple of little ones are still awake, but they're all falling asleep. Oh, this little little Eve has, is losing her slipper. Isn't she cute? Look at her. Isn't she adorable?
as you know you'll get you'll get to see more of these in tomorrow's video in the chat yes and they've got even got undies on it's so cute there we are and garfield's up there proud as punch he's bigger than anyone look at him so cute and Minnie mouse aren't they beautiful um, I think these ones are my tiniest ones, even though they're Behringer. They're my tiniest ones. They're about five inches. That's what they come in, knitted outfit. They're cute. Yeah, I've got a list of things I want to talk about tomorrow, things that are coming up and things that have happened. And, yes, and everybody, I hope you enjoyed the story of the Emperor's New Clothes. I tell you, it's one way to get some money. <laughs> Steal her from the king. So, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this story. I hope your babies have enjoyed the story today. Um, and I was going to... It doesn't look good. It looks okay. I was going to have pink, but pink wouldn't, would be, wouldn't, I wouldn't stand out in the pink, so I put the blue blanket up there. A little sunshine happiness. There she is. Garfield's sitting there relaxing. So I would leave him here to relax while I go out. And they always, um, these two little ones have got their own little bassinet, which I'll show you tomorrow. And the other ones, they all sit in the cot with, with the other big babies. And so that's it for today. I hope whoever you are in this beautiful world we have, you having a great day and enjoy your days. Take one day at a time. Don't rush to get through the day. We Life is too short to rush. So live for now and enjoy what you do. Enjoy your babies. And I hope you have a good day and I will see you in my next video. So everybody, bye-bye. Bye-bye.